Hi guys, I'm Shmi. Hello and welcome back to the channel where you join me today for the hypercar drive of hypercar drives. I'm here with the Triple F collection in Ohio in the US and we're about to go out for a convoy with six of the hypercars from their collection. We're going to be taking the Porsche 918 Spider Visac package, the full blue carbon bodied McLaren P1, the Bugatti Chiron, the Koenigsegg Regera, and then also joined by the Pagani Huayra BC, and then the car that I'm going to be driving, the new McLaren Sabre. My first drive in a Sabre, only 15 of them in the world, and it's going to be in a convoy here with the Triple F collection with all of the other hypercars. This is going to be insane. The first step then is that we need to take the cars out. I think it's going to be the Chiron first. So let's have the start up of the 8 litre quad turbo. Next up, actually, but this is about to be pretty mega. Next up, indeed, comes the Huayra BC. Machina Volante, one of 20, but very much a one-off. You can see with the different wing that this car wears. Listen to that. Twin turbo V12 in there, six litre. I guess, technically, the Regera can go in uh, electric mode, completely different to the uh, combustion engine vehicles. It was plugged in to its dedicated charger that actually goes listen to the way that starts such an unusual sound completely different to the others this is this is a little bit mental at the moment that we're actually doing this and taking all of the cars out together and out comes the Koenigsegg Regera the Swedish word Rayera means to rain and I think this pretty much does with Koenigsegg's very very clever very bespoke technology behind it and what a beautiful day it is today to take the cars for a drive just pulling them all around to the front of the house at the moment it's going to be mental the P1 is sat at the moment in race mode but let's take a listen <laughs> in the league with Porsche and Ferrari only two years after first delivering a road car. 918 time and here we've got a naturally aspirated V8 actually quite quiet compared to some of the others like the V1 though hybrid system just under 900 horsepower in the 918 sandwiched alongside its elder brother which we're not going to be taking today but don't get me wrong the Carrera GT naturally aspirated V10 manual gearbox is something very spectacular in its own right obviously target roof panels that you can pull off really really nice but i think next after the 918 is shuffled out it's going to be saber time it's time then for the mclaren saber and i tell you what that's a lot louder than the center and look at these tail lights lmp style there are so many details about this car that when it's outside i'm going to have to talk you through twin turbo V8 as opposed to the 3.8 in the P1, the most powerful combustion engine for Paran. <laughs> that looks so cool. So, we will be leaving the other amazing cars in the collection for the time being. But now, let's head on out. I'll show you a few more things about this. Would you take a look 
at what is going on here then. Out in the sunshine with the snow on the ground, six of the hypercars from the Triple F collection that in a few minutes we're about to take out for an absolutely ridiculous convoy together. From the Chiron on the Huayra BC to the Regera and the Full Carbon P1 to the Visac Package 918 and of course the new McLaren Sabre that I'm going to be driving for the first time and of course also the first time I've even been up close to a new Sabre to take a look around at the latest McLaren hypercar. So let's take a few minutes just to go through the details of what exactly this car is. It started as a bespoke commission from some customers here in the USA to MSO, McLaren Special Operations, to build a completely unique and special vehicle. There are 15 of them in total, one of the 15 that's pretty rare in its own right in fact, one of 15, one of 918, one of 375, one of 80, one of 20 and one of 500 Chirons, so all numbered very rare cars but built to US homologation standards and all of the cars are here in the USA as well, all United States customers. That means a few changes from let's say if it was a car introduced for the global or the European markets but based as a development on from the Senna. So it's got the carbon fibre monocage, the carbon fibre tub, it's got the 4 litre twin turbo V8 except in the Sabre it makes 835 horsepower along with 800 newton metres of torque which makes it the most powerful non-hybrid McLaren ever. It is also the fastest two-seater McLaren ever as well, eclipsing the Senna with a top speed of 218 miles per hour. Of course, not including the three-seaters, the Speedtail, and before that, the McLaren F1, the legend from the 90s. We have a full carbon fiber body. The weight is about 1,490 kilos. In the case of this car, car number seven, we've got the navy blue carbon fiber over the bonnet sections, the normal black carbon fiber over the wings with the accent color in the Paris blue. It wears specific wheels for the Sabre, these diamond machined wheels, which as you can see, have the holes through them, of course milled out to save some weight. Entirely new bodywork, nothing shared with the Senna at all, and even this car, by the way, is actually running on some Soto Zero winter tyres, prepared for the purpose from McLaren Philadelphia when it was originally delivered. But when you come around towards the back, look at this. Heavily LMP1 inspired, gigantic rear spoiler, in fact, in some ways, a little bit like that found on the Senna GTR. For the first time on a McLaren, it has a shark fin that runs over the engine bay cover to stabilise it high speed and also this completely mean diffuser which for McLaren's first time as well integrates uh, some active flaps to help with stability at high speed as well. If we come and take a look inside the door handles for the car are actually just here you have a button inside lift that up in here we've got the P1 style seats that are actually significantly more comfortable than the Senna seats you could choose which ones you'd have actually in this car but so many special details from the fade on the carbon fiber to a new central control panel to all sorts of different things that have been made exclusively for this car we'll have a better look at those I guess when we return but for the moment we're going to take all of these out for a drive here we go then all the cars ahead have their engines running we have the soft closed doors in here like the Senna start button on the roof there we go okay this is cool we've got a different graphic on the display we have a Sabre right how are we? we've got half a tank of fuel good okay this is going to feel quite similar the, the front scuttle is different how you have the new style arches the whole bodywork is just slightly smoothened out and a little bit more streamlined it's nice to be in the, the center tub with these bucket seats. I really, really like these seats. The same seats I have in my 675 LT. So let's adjust everything, get comfortable. I'm just looking out in front. Look actually how you have uh, the exhaust pipes on the top of the 918, how that looks in the cold. It's obviously freezing outside, so we need to keep our wits about us. But this is, this is about to happen. <laughs> this is mental. I can't say thank you enough already to the Triple F collection guys that we're doing this. If that isn't a cool view, I don't really know what is. Off we go then. Oh, this is going to be a uh, totally, 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 totally ridiculous. Look at this. I mean, even if you had just this car on its own, it would be special. If you had this car plus like one of the others, it would be special. And then you've got this line, 918 P1, Regera BC, and the Chiron up ahead of the camera car going out <laughs> what are we doing i tell you what though this straight away feels smoother than the senna 
in terms of the suspension, in terms of the sound, I don't feel like I have to shout it the same way that I do in the Senna. It just feels all round immediately a touch more refined, which I think is the purpose behind it in many ways. Obviously, we'll get out on the road shortly and have a better opportunity to see exactly what it's about. It's already, <laughs> already crazy, I think I could say. Well, if this wasn't silly, I don't really know what it is. We're actually doing some photos and videos as well. We've got Evan from Miller Motorhurst driving in the 918. Right tack over to the right. What do we have coming past? I mean, just behind me. This is the most extraordinary view. That's a way to try and get back a little bit from some of the others. We've got the camera van up front, and then coming past <laughs> the Pagani Wire of BC. I mean, one of 20. Look at that on the road. And then that goes past us, and then next coming straight by is the Koenigsegg Regira. <laughs> Oh, listen to that. Obviously, with Koenigsegg direct drive, effectively, like, one gear. No double clutch in the way that this does, for example, with the seven-speed dual clutch. And in fact, if I press the active dynamics panel here, we can go into sport mode, sport on both handling and powertrain. I want the, uh, the Chiron to come past, and it's alongside us at the moment. Wow. The sound of power. Okay, this is cool. It really is, though. This car is so much more civilized than the Senna. It's it's even quieter than I would say the 675 LT is. Obviously, you still get the clicks on the shift. If you're wondering about that, it's because of the rocker technology. So if you go up to, let's say, to second gear, you can either pull on the right or you can press on the left. But it has pre-cog, which means that when you gently half pull, it repairs the gearbox. And when you completely click it, it's an instant shift, just like that. What do we have behind us? <laughs> I mean, if we were on the road following a Regera, that would already be something that was absolutely crazy and out of this world. Then take into account the fact that we're in a McLaren Sabre. I mean, most people wouldn't know what this car is. Most people would never, like, apart from maybe seeing the McLaren badge, would not know what I'm driving right now. Brand new. Super special. <laughs> I'm just wondering like, how we can see everybody. I think other people must just be... If I was driving and I saw all of this, I would stop whatever I was doing. I would be following it instantly because I would want to know what was going on as the blue carbon P1 rolls alongside. <laughs> oh, all of these cars are driven. They're used. It's one of the most epic collections for that. The guys just share everything. Dave, Jordan and Jason, Triple F, the three guys together with the cars. Getting them used, getting them seen, and I can't thank them enough for this opportunity. The sound of that as the turbo spool up. You get some nice bangs out of this as well on the shift. Obviously, like we see in the LT models and a bit in the center, but I think this does it more. This has an Inconel exhaust system. We're just basically rotating and shuffling around, getting some shots of things. And all the cars together. <laughs> this is just silly, even though we're taking it easy, to be driving with this group of cars is so absolutely mad. When the lights go green and we're back on the moon, in fact, I'm going to open the window again for the sounds of the cars as they come past. This is just one of those insane days that I can't quite fully comprehend what we're doing at the moment because there is so much to take in. The Regira is back with us now. 918 hovering behind. I want to I want to hear some of that V8 as they come past. Well, they're probably going to be running in e mode, I guess. <laughs> the 918 is such. That, that will be a, 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 a kind of timeless... A timeless design. Just listen to it as it goes through. The Chiron and us have probably taken a wrong turn. I'm not quite sure where the rest of the group is, but this gives me an opportunity to talk for a moment about what this car is actually like to drive. Because in so many ways, where the Senna is almost like the LT version of the Senna, this feels like the regular model, so to speak. Obviously, it has an even bigger wing than the Senna has. But to drive, the suspension is smoother. You don't find it's pulling everywhere in the way that the Senna does, but obviously that comes with the Senna being so 
at home on the racetrack. This is the sanitized road variant, if we could say it like that. You don't have the same level of rattles and noises all around you, which the Senna, I guess, is almost overwhelmed with, because when you're driving it on the road, you feel like there's perhaps a little bit too much. Then when you do accelerate with the car, you get these, well, you didn't get one there, but you get the pops and bangs from it that we've come to know from the McLaren LT models. It's just, it, it's basically the perfect McLaren package. It has all the looks and craziness and the exclusivity factor, the wow factor, without being too overly compromised. Obviously on a racetrack, it's not gonna quite keep up with a Senna, despite having those LMP style attributes. But driving like this, I, I mean, this is just an absolutely brilliant car. Honestly, it's so cool to be driving the Sabre. Well, the good news is that we've managed to find everybody here in the car park at a Taco Bell. And I guess, stop sign after all, I do need to stop. <laughs> and I guess everybody found the cars as well, which is pretty crazy. Let's work out where we're gonna pull in in this little uh, inception of epicness of the cars just here. This is not a view that you see every day. The Sabre, the BC, the Chiron, the P1, the Regira, and the 918 behind. Actually, we've got the four blue cars up front at the moment, all carbon bodied, actually. This is just, ah, oh, there we go, with a bit of sun glistening off the blue P1 as well. Wow, that is, um, that is quite extraordinary. Huge kudos to Triple F Collection for getting all of these cars out, for driving them, and also the number of people that have popped out to come and see them as well. Look at this. Just look at this car. There's so much to it. The more time you spend around the Sabre, the more small details you see. For example, the milled holes here in the carbon for the cooling out from the engine. Obviously the roof snorkel here as well is integrated in over the top with that shark fin, as opposed to the Senna's, which sits high and proud over the very top of the car. Obviously all led by aerodynamics, wind tunnel testing and the like. Yeah, <laughs> this is just beyond words. We're back on the road then, rolling back on out. I still can't quite get my head over what's in front of us here and how absolutely absurd this line of cars actually is. Now that's the sound of power from the Koenigsegg. One and a half thousand horsepower, it's actually more than that, but they have to limit the delivery between the hybrid system simply due to how much it has. Even the 992 would keep up with any of these, right? As we <laughs> join the line of traffic and we've just got the, the sea of epic cars in front of us. In fact, I'm gonna squeeze on into that lane as well. <laughs> look at the P1 though, look at the way it has that almost bowl at the back inside of the rear arches. Obviously, function coming first, form following function with the design. There we go, there we get a little bang out of it. It's better to be on the road with everybody back in the convoy the drive back from here, so spontaneous and so random and crazy, as you do, I think.
your face then, Chiron rolling through the Sabre. I want to show you a few more things. Actually, I'm going to start by showing you guys the key. This is the key to the Sabre, a different key to the normal McLaren keys. I suspect that the normal key is effectively inside, but the Sabre with its exclusive housing to support that. Obviously, inside here, this car has an extensive list of options. For example, on the carbon of the steering wheel, you've got the satin Paris blue fade through to the carbon fiber. Of course, you've got the blue perforations here on the side sill, same with the floor mats, the blue anodized shift paddles as well, and all of the switch gear, the surround here, which wasn't something you could change on the center. You had to have the standard uh, finish. You couldn't choose for the air vents or the uh, nav system surround and the track telemetry and that side of things. Same around the drive neutral reverse panel here with the MSO logo down at the bottom and the comfortable pad in the center where the center has more just a rubber um, storage area effectively. Obviously instead of the side windows of the center, I've got this grooved out shape as well with the perforations continuing and even actually the fade through here, all special details specific to this car, number seven. What else do we have? I've got my bag up here at the moment, but the small storage area in the back of the cage, just like with the center where you can squeeze one or two very small little bags. But all in all, it is a really, really special thing. Oh, I want to show you the fuel filler cap. You might be wondering about this. There's actually a button here, which you press to release that. That's where you have the filler. On the center, it's in the same place as you would expect. But here it sits beneath this glass panel, which closes back down. And obviously when the doors are closed, you can see the air airflow that goes through those. When the door is closed back down, it gives you this smooth, shiny finish of the window glass going through towards the tail of the car. Just, I suppose, smoothening the design of it ever so slightly. But with all of those, and now obviously the Cullinan out here too, that was a pretty cool drive. That was a, uh, a really special experience. To drive in the car that I guess I need to relate almost like the McLaren GT of the hypercars, if I could say. I mean, I described it obviously earlier, but it's just a bit more compliant. You don't have all the rattles and the crazy noises that you do with the Senna. So you can see how that kind of works and how the car's been, been made. Like I said at the very beginning, a commission for a group of 15 customers here in the USA. Just what an experience to now have driven one myself. A big thanks to the Triple F collection. That was, as I said, the hypercar drive of hypercar drives and what a drive it was. For now though, that is all. I'll pop the links down below to the Triple F Collection's YouTube channel and their Instagram page if you'd like to see more of the cars in action. And believe me, these cars are being driven, which is just so fantastic. That's it for now though. Thanks for watching guys, and I'll see you again very soon. Cheers.